Hello and welcome to another episode of the In News series. Today we are going to discuss how uncontrolled re-entry of rockets are causing an issue with respect to human and of course the property. We are going to discuss it from the perspective of GS Means paper third and also from the perspective of preliminary examination. Certain facts are important for your examination. So let us begin without any further ado and look at these many topics that we are going to discuss step by step. First of all, let us talk about the news. The news is that more than 140 experts and dignitaries, they have signed an open letter. This open letter has been published by the Outer Space Institute. And in this letter, these experts have called for both national as well as international efforts to restrict uncontrolled re-entries of rockets. Now, controlled entries are those entries of rockets when they are of course no longer in use. They must head back to Earth so that first we can reduce the debris and secondly, we can ensure that we have more space for other satellites as well. So, the problem is not with controlled one. The problem is with, with, with respect to the uncontrolled one. Because controlled ones, of course, they are much more professionally handled. They are ensured to fall somewhere which does not possess any risk to human lives. And generally, it's in the water. Because why it is in the water all the time? Most of the times that we hear, because Earth has its surface covered more by water as compared to land. Now, if we discuss the stages of rocket, then rocket launch as well as re-entry. First of all, we need to understand that the world's tryst with space program began by the Soviet Union when it launched its first artificial satellite in the year 1957. And currently, there are more than 6,000 satellites in orbit. Most of them are in the low Earth orbit, which ranges across 100 to 2,000 km, and the geostationary orbit, that is 35,786 km of orbit. These rockets generally have multiple stages. Now, when these rockets are launched, they are launched with the help of, of course, the technologies and they are carrying a payload. These payloads are sent to the space to do some specific task, either communication or cartography or any other thing. So, these rockets carry the payload, okay? And maybe it is important for you to understand how debris occur. So, when space rockets are sent, they start detaching themselves step by step so that they become lighter in space and their objective of launching or setting the payload at the particular orbit is complete. And when it does so, it removes all its parts and that is why it remains in space. Now, these parts of the rockets have to come back into the Earth's atmosphere because they cannot stay there forever. So once the stage has increased the rocket's altitude and velocity by a certain amount, it sheds it. Some rockets jettison all their large stages before reaching the destination orbit and a small engine then moves the payload to its final orbit. I hope it is understood. Now others carry the payload to the orbit and then they perform. First, it might happen that they shed all their stages. Others carry the payload in their entirety and then start deorbiting. So this is also one thing. Once they have done their job after a, small, after a stipulated amount of time, they will leave their orbit and descend through the atmosphere. Many of them burn because of friction in the atmosphere. Some of them fall and when they fall with a huge speed, it can cause risk to human life. And then of course, we have heard so many examples in the recent times, uncontrolled re-entries have increased and we must understand that these uncontrolled entries are something to be acknowledged. Now, rocket, when it comes to uncontrolled entries, re-entries, they simply fall. The problem is that they can fall at any time. We do not know what the time is. The shape, angle of descent, air currents and other characteristics are certain factors which dictate the fall of the uncontrolled re-entry of the rockets. As the smaller pieces fan out, the potential radius of impact will increase on the ground 
and this is a cause of concern. According to a 2021 report of the International Space Safety Foundation, it said that an impact anywhere on an airliner with debris of mass above 300 grams, it would produce a catastrophic failure, meaning all people on board would be killed. That is the issue. Then internationally, the sad part is there is no clear and widely agreed casualty risk threshold with respect to re-entry of the rocket. The 2010 US, UN Space Debris Mitigation Guidelines say that re-entering spacecraft do not pose an undue risk to people or property, but they do not define what this mean. What does this mean has not been defined, which is very open to interpretation. The 2018 UN guidelines for the long-term sustainability of outer space activities, it calls on the countries or the national governments to address the risk which is associated with the uncontrolled re-entry of space object, but they do not set the guidelines on how. Now the next part is that there is no binding treaty that addresses rocket body re-entries, apart from the 1972 liability convention of course. It stipulates that launching state that means any country which is launching the rocket shall be absolutely liable to pay compensation for the damage that has been created due to re-entry of unco uncontrolled re-entry of the rocket okay uh, of course controlled can also be taken into the picture so this is given in the 1972 liability convention moving ahead now there are certain examples that have been cited in this letter as what we call a an uncontrolled re-entry Examples of parts of a Russian rocket in 2018 and China's Long March 5V rockets in 2020 and 2022, striking parts of Indonesia, Peru, India and Ivory Coast among others. But the thing is that historically, the US has been the worst offenders when it comes to this. Parts of a SpaceX Falcon 9 fell down in Indonesia in 2016 and these included two refrigerated sized fuel tanks and if the re-entering stages still hold fuel, then atmospheric and terrestrial chemical contamination is another risk. So, how can we just control this issue is a question right now. Conservative estimates place the casualty risk from uncontrolled rockets body re-entry as being on the order of 10% in the next year. Because as the world's powers start becoming space powers the, and the space region becomes less and less which is available for parking the satellites, this is going to happen because there are a lot of defunct satellites that are in the lower earth orbit. So they might re-enter uncontrollably into the earth and many regions have become pretty densely populated and the countries in the global south face a disproportionately higher risk of such casualties. And US orbital debris mitigation standard practices require all launches to keep the chance of casualty risk from a re-entering body to below 0.01%. But this is arbitrary. On which basis this threshold has been set, it is not scientific. And it makes little sense in an era when new technologies have emerged and that can enable controlled re-entries. When you are well equipped with the technologies, why not? you are going for a controlled re-entry and just uncontrolled re-entry. Many places, as I said, have become more densely populated, specifically, specifically in the global south. Spent rockets, dead satellites, fragments of space objects and debris, which results from anti-satellite system that is a technology to destroy these satellites in space. They all comprise of, uh, they all are part of space junk or space debris. Now, these are hurtling at an average speed of 27,000 km per hour in the lower Earth orbit and this free floating space debris is a potential hazard for operational satellite and colliding with the system, it can leave the satellite dysfunctional. When it happens, now as this particular satellite, suppose it gets broken down because it had a collision with other rogue satellite. And now it has broken down into many other parts and each of this part possess a high risk to other satellites as well. And then when it collides with other satellites, more and more space debris will be formed. And this entire situation is known as Kessler syndrome. Okay. And of course, this is a not very healthy picture for the future missions. Now let's move ahead and talk about how many countries or which countries are responsible for space junk 
in the space currently. Russia is at the top, then comes, uh, this is all as of February 2022. Then it is USA, then China, then France, Japan, and then we have India, which is on the seventh number, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, sorry, sixth number. Then after that, ESA, and then we have UK. Now, this next graph shows us that countries that have registered most number of pollen bodies from space. As we see, Russia is number one. Then we see another one that is the USA, of course. Then China, France, Japan, India, lesser, and then so on. So you see, the world powers are responsible right now. And so are those powers such as us who are becoming a world power. Now, what about India with respect to the junk, the space junk? According to Orbital Debris Quarterly News issued in March this year by NASA, India has 103 spacecraft including active and de defunct satellites and 114 space debris objects, including spent rocket bodies which are orbiting the Earth. So, the country has a total of 217 space objects orbiting the Earth. Active debris removal was one of the active methods through which we can, uh, you know, get rid of space debris, collect space debris, but it is much more complex. And it was suggested by the space debris research community to contain the growth of space debris. Moving ahead, Project Netra has also been launched by India. It is an early warning system in space to detect debris and other hazards to Indian satellites. India's 300 kg Resat 2 satellite re entered Earth's atmosphere. In, orbit, in October, after 13 years of uh, spending time in the lower Earth orbit, the ISRO tracked it with the system for safe and sustainable space operation management from a month beforehand. So, it was a controlled re-entry. It eventually fell into the Indian Ocean on October 30th. So, we need to develop technologies. We need treaties which are binding in nature. Specifically, now as we see, the, uh, every other country wants to reach space on its own. It recommends what is the minimum damage that can be caused, what can make minimum damage that uh, the letter says. It recommends that bodies aim for ocean, not land, so that they can, uh, you know, prohibit any sort of casualties. Future solutions are needed, for example, technology development, a binding treaty, and of course, technology upgradation. Advances in electronics and fabrication have made way for smaller satellites and smaller satellites as they are easier to carry they will require less space in the space that is why it is important for all the important space administration uh, watchdogs of the entire world to come together and have a look at it have a serious look at this letter so i will take the names of those who have answered my last question in the upcoming monday on the upcoming monday because not many of you have done it as of yet. I'm giving you a chance to again answer the last question if you haven't as of yet. And I will attach another question today. Take your names together in the upcoming segment. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and stay updated.